the uh, debate to um, legitimize the gay community on the island started way back in the end of the 80s uh, with the initial debate to uh, decriminalize homosexuality uh, long after the changes were brought in in the United Kingdom. And it was a hard fought battle initially to uh, bring in that initial legislation to decriminalize. Uh, and I've uh, been quoted on many occasions of saying that the end of the 80s, early 90s was a really, really dark period for the Isle of Man in terms of uh, the society's attitude to the gay community. Uh, a number of people committed suicide. Many people left the island. It caused divorces. It caused people to lose their jobs. It was a really very, very unpleasant uh, time. Eventually, though, the legislation did go through, and that was the start of the, the journey then, really, to bring the, Uni uh, the Isle of Man in line with uh, the United Kingdom and, indeed, with international standards elsewhere in acceptance of the gay community. Uh, we went through various uh, other pieces of legislation, uh, such as uh, equalizing the age of consent uh, and, um, latterly, of course, um, the uh, civil partnership and gay marriage. So that there's been many steps over the, the, the last few years, but the big one, the real battle and the, the most unpleasant period of all was the actual decriminalization. So moving on now to the uh, possibility of pardoning uh, uh, those historic uh, convictions, uh, I think it's a legitimate uh, and logical uh, end line, really, to, to the debate which has been going on. And it would help, I think, to uh, heal the uh, divides which... Uh, did cause real problems within the community. During your political career, um, sort of more specifically post the decriminalisation period, um, were notions of an apology or a pardon ever considered, or is this the first time? We were starting to look at it at the end of, of the last administration. Uh, the Minister of Home Affairs at the time uh, had raised the issue, and it was something, I think, which was on the agenda. But uh, at that point, I think, with trying to get to, uh, the, first of all, the civil partnership and latterly the uh, gay marriage, uh, that was deemed to be a, a higher, higher priority. And, of course, subsequently, we've been overtaken by events in the United Kingdom where they now have uh, agreed to uh, pardon historic convictions in uh, all parts of the United Kingdom now. And I think there are something like 50,000 uh, convictions now in various stages of being reviewed as a result of that. So the issue has only really become current in the last couple of years. And so I think it's it's appropriate now that the Isle of Man uh, should take notice of what's happening elsewhere uh, and realise if we really want to draw a line under uh, the uh, unpleasant history of, of this matter to take major steps to heal the divisions which existed and have been driven into the community, now is, is the, exactly the right time to bring in this legislation and uh, to um, pardon those people who were convicted. And I think many of them w would actually like uh, an apology from government and in particular from the police for the actions which went on in the past, which have caused serious problems to their lives and indeed their families. So notions of, of a pardon and apology is completely separate in, in this instance, because I imagine the, the pardon on the proposal for the legislation would wipe clean the, the, the criminal record. Um, as you mentioned there, you know, you've asked for an apology or the community has called for an apology. I know Alan Shea, particularly the, the, the gay rights campaigner, has um, called for an apology to the individuals as well as families. Um, and I believe that if there was going to be an apology, it would be considered by the Council of Ministers. Is, is, that, is that right? Yes, uh, the Council of Ministers obviously would, would need to make uh, the d ultimate decision on, on what to do about this. Uh, I understand the Chief Constable is very sympathetic towards this, this position and uh, was obviously aware of the police role over the years uh, in uh, bringing about many of these convictions. Um, I would hope that the, uh, the current Council Ministers um, would s step back and look at the history of this uh, situation, uh, which I've really just briefly touched on and recognize uh, that a wrong was done to the gay community, a serious wrong, which has destroyed many, many lives and, and disrupted many, many families over the years. And therefore, it's absolutely appropriate now uh, in the, the climate of, of um, coming together and forgiveness uh, we see in the United Kingdom and elsewhere, over this matter anyway, uh, and that the Isle of Man should follow suit and the, the council um, initiate the, the legislation. And what do you make of Mr Shea's accusations against the police 
um, saying that they harassed, threatened and, and blackmailed um, him as well as others in the community. I think uh, Mr Shea will be f referring to the period at the end of the 80s and uh, early 90s, again prior to the decriminalisation, when uh, within the gay community uh, uh, anyway, there was a great deal of fear and concern about the actions of, of the police or certain police and in particular the policies of the chief constable of the day who was uh, a very uh, fundamentalist uh, uh, chief constable uh, having come from Manchester uh, and worked under Mr Anderton who was uh, notorious for his policies uh, it caused a great deal of distress on the island and um, I think it's fair to say that uh, the actions that were taken at that time led to a number of young people on the island uh, committing suicide and certainly uh, a number of others who were forced to leave the island because they couldn't live in these circumstances. So there was a, feel, a feeling of fear and of harassment um, and uh, general oppression really coming from the establishment at that time. Um, so, uh, and Alan Shea of course was very much at the forefront of that with his own personal protests which uh, took a great deal of courage at that time and I know he got a great deal of abuse for it. But those of us in uh, government, the politicians who were trying to change the law, equally suffered a great deal of abuse uh, as well. So I know exactly what he's saying. And uh, I, I think the, all of this needs to be brought together and recognized by the Council of Ministers and uh, an appropriate action be taken to apologize and to um, heal those divisions. And would it come directly from the police? I, I'm absolutely sure once the Council of Ministers make their decision on, on what the way forward might be, and I think their consultation is due to finish in February, um, so I would hope they would come to a conclusion fairly soon after that as to what the action is likely to be on this, that if they do decide that it's appropriate to um, uh, pardon those past um, convictions and to apologise to those people whose lives have been ruined because of it, uh, I think the police would want to follow suit too.